So a lot of you have been asking a lot of questions recently. I mean, not about the play, but about me. But do not fear, I have all of your questions here on my nifty little cellular device. So question one, where are you from? I am from New Jersey. Central Jersey, born and raised. On the playground is where I spent most of my days. I'm not gonna do that. Question two, where did you go to college? Um, I went to, uh, I mean, it's not really that important where I went to school. What is important is that I am very, very passionate about the theater. Question three, how did you and Chloe meet? Oh, I believe I can answer that. Hey, you're home early. Hey. Welcome. <clears throat> of course. Well, this is the story I tell everybody. I was visiting a friend of mine who ran the French club one October evening, and there was this little sophomore sitting there. That's me. With an entire uncut baguette <laughs> and wearing a French flag as cape. The baguette was for my future club mates. I mean, I also brought a knife, so. So I walked up to her and I asked, if she knew just how blatantly offensive what she was wearing and holding was, <laughs> and that if she had any respect for the French culture whatsoever, she would be revolted with herself. Just horrified. I did give her a piece of bread for her advice. So then I asked her what she was doing there with so little knowledge of what the purpose of the club was, and she told me that she was there to do research for her magnum opus, her words. And we basically talked about that for three hours. <laughs> and I realized that she was funny and kind of charming. And that I was basically <laughs> the female protagonist of a Judd Apatow movie in that I instantly loved the hilarious idiot. Do you remember what you said to me when I told you about my really incredible film idea? Yeah, I remember verbatim. How can a lesbian remake of Belle du Jour be your magnum opus if it's a remake. <laughs> well, actually, you did get me there, but I did set off her underclassmen that will date me alarm. It was my thing at the time to get with underclassmen, but only for short periods, considering I had graduated and everything. I mean, they were fine, uh, just, I don't know, short periods of okay. time, <laughs> but not for the long term, though apparently that wasn't true for long. Yeah. I knew that I was the exception to the rule and we went to go see the Pink Panther movie at film night. <laughs> yeah, it's the only time you've ever been right over me for anything. Just you wait until my play takes off. Uh, well that's, it's just a experimental thing, right? What? Well, I mean, you don't know that. A lot of really great <clears throat> works of art start off as little experimental things, so. What? So you think your play is going to be like the next big hit and you're going to win a bunch of awards? I think a more realistic expectation is to make cult status at best. All right. Well, thanks for your support, hon. Well, come on. I mean, you know how hard it is to make a piece of art last in the public consciousness. I mean, even huge celebrities fade out. Cultural impact never dies out. Are you kidding? Do you still see anyone doing the Macarena? Or D.W. Griffith being held up as paragon of social commentary. Look at Cuba Gooding Jr., for example. Win one Oscar and go bye-bye. I just wish you could have a little bit more faith in me. I do. But luck is a big part of it. And so far the evidence suggests that's not your best area. All right, well, you made your point. Look, I'm just trying You to made your point. All right, well, question four. Who are your artistic influences? Oh, well, besides Jack Conway, who I've talked about many, many times on this program, I have four. One is Konstantin Stanislavski, uh, Michael Greif, Julie Taymor, and of course, Tupac. People tell me that the Tupac one's a little bit strange, but let me explain. No one ever told Tupac what to do. And also, he worked politics into his music, and uh, there's a statue of him in Germany, so I guess that basically makes him immortal. Oh. And also he's been seen in Brooklyn and Montreal five separate times in the past five years. Not this again. All right, so it looks like we're out of time. Wait, aren't all these different lists? I'll have to answer all of your questions next week, so. As two French club members would say, au revoir. Like two people in the club spoke fluent French. Well, all right then, sayonara.